this is a Dyson DC50 or Dyson small ball and it has a little bit of a problem the main motor works fine the brush farm motor however nothing at all ignore the fact that the head's falling off that's not the problem yes this is one of those videos where we are going to replace the thing that sits under there we are going to replace this the control board for the brush roll itself so let's get on with it Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? This is a fiddly, fiddly job indeed, but not too complicated. Oh, pardon me. So, troubleshoot this. I literally saw that the PCB had issues. I don't know how to get to the switch pack. I don't quite know how all of this back stuff comes off. So, I cannot help you there. I'm afraid, but yes, it, it, it soon became quite obvious as I shall show you when we get there. That's better. As to what the problem is, but yeah, we've got a fair bit of stripping down to do, and unfortunately, it's one of the most tricky uh, things to strip down because the yoke's got to come off. So we'll take the filter off of one side and the ball off of the other. Now we actually need to take off this plate here which forms the back of the filter housing and sort of just tidies up lots of little holes and gaps in the moulding and so on and such forth and with four little screws it lifts off like so and it's these three holes here that we need to get to. Oh no, actually I lie, you want to have the machine standing up. Oh, and with your smaller torque screwdriver, undo the three screws below. And you flip it over, and with your bigger screwdriver, undo the two screws holding this half moon clip together. And then once they're removed, that part comes off like that. Next, oh, where? Yep. In these two holes here are two more screws. One there, and one on the other side here like that and then you should be able to pop off it might take a little bit of prying on this part just to unclip it there we go but you've also got to be careful that this loom here is still connected so that is floating like that that is where we want it to be now this is one of the most horrible parts because this loom wire is now in the way and it's a lot of work to try and move it apart what you can do is take out you probably should have done this first If you take off the internal hose, this bit becomes a lot easier because you want as much of a gap there so you can slide this down as far as you can in order for it to slide off of its thing, of its little slider. Then there's four more screws, T15 I think these are rather than the T10, that the smaller ones, something like that. 
Ah, I'm on bed here. They are fiddly to access. Obviously Dyson wouldn't really want you in here and then triple checking that your machine is unplugged. We can now see the circuit board, which we need to replace. So we'll pull it out. And then there's actually still some old terminals on this one. This one came from eBay. It was only about well, it was 12 pounds delivered and there were lots of them. Oh, so first we'll get all of the rubbish off. There we go. And I'm actually just going to start taking the wires off one by one and putting them back on the other circuit board. Of course you can take a photo to tell you where it should go. That's a fairly good way of doing it but since we're here and now I'm just going to swap these wires over and then we can fit the board back into the machine. One of the ways you can test to see if this is a circuit board is this loom terminates in this plug. So you can take this plug off the board and then probe from the connectors to the end of the loom. And that will tell you what your problem is. But in this case, I took a bit of a gamble because look, this chip has blown clean off the board, which means this machine has run very, very hot at some point. And basically fried off a piece of the board so yeah there is a thing so with one more oh with one more being the worst connector we shall put it back together oh that was a vacuum cleaner how exciting right pcb slid back into place oh and this is the bit that i'm not looking forward to showing you because this is a hateful hateful job in itself but we have to screw this cover back on. And then get this ugh, back onto this, which is a horrible, horrible job. Mainly because you have to line this clear cog up here with the notches around there. It's... Ugh. Not nice, and it's quite easy to get it the wrong way around as well. And you've got to keep that part from going wrong. And oh, it's just a fiddly, horrible, hateful task. So I cannot offer you any tips at all, except good luck. You've come this far, you may as well carry on and finish off the job. What can help a little bit is if you loosen the screw holding this clear plastic wheel on, but do not take it off because you cannot get it back on from the inside. This then lets it bend a little bit so you can manipulate it on. Now that has clicked on really rather nicely, but the problem is you have to make sure that the wheels lock up. Otherwise, it's just one notch too far the wrong way, which this is big time ah, so you've got to try and just move it a little bit and then slide it into place obviously the internal hose flap it here see that won't go all the way down sure there is a really simple way of doing this but I don't know what it is and yeah I'm going to fiddle this around until it works. The next thing to do whilst this is all hanging loose is to slide our top cover piece on because you have to start quite far down and again the wheels are up out of the way it's a lot easier. There we 
we go. And then your slider is done. Oh, I've twisted my cables. We can now line this plastic cog up by pushing it as far back as it will go, making sure it slots in. Oof. Then, you need to pivot the whole thing down, push these two pieces together, which is quite tricky, <laughs> very finite. You have to move that white plastic clip out of the way. Oh. And then just sort of try and see if the wheels click into place. And if they do, which this one has, and your white wheel pushes itself all the way over, I don't think do it all the way. like that, it is done. Now the fiddly part is getting this white part out of the way enough for these two bits to push together. Ah, there we go. Which they've just done magically like so. Bang in a screw. Quickly. Before it decides it doesn't want to. Ah, there we go. Hunt around for the other screw, which is here. Put the inner hose back on by fishing it through the back and sliding it into place and yeah check once more that everything works well. What I've just seen is that the white plastic cage inside there has moved. Thank you very much stupid white plastic cage but it's fairly easy to flick it back around until the screw holes line up. Oh, these are these are not nice machines to work on. People often ask me why I don't do full strip downs on machines like this, and the answer is they're too too tricky. Even I have to sit and take my time over it. It's only because I've had that PCB out before that I thought I would do this little video whilst it was still fresh in my head. Other side goes there. Like so, making sure that the white part goes behind the silver part as shown. Oh, why aren't you finding the thread? No. Oh, really? Okay. We can pop our holder back on for the post motor filter. And then fit the post motor filter, the filter housing slash wheel, making sure that you get it there we go, onto the thread. Then we can fit the other side with its one screw, like so. Fit the brush roll housing, but this time make sure it actually stays attached. So, fiddly aren't they? Put the cyclone back on and then, oh, this is the real moment of truth, if it pops again, you know it's a problem. Oh. Would you look at that, it span briefly and then died. Oh dear. Well, 
it's it, it's blown the new one as well look in the same place so that must mean that there is something wrong with the brush roll motor inside now you cannot easily take this style apart i have done it before it is not fun and i'm not attempting to do it now if this is blowing components on the board it is like properly properly broken so um yeah how to change the pcb in your dc50 however if your brush roll is not spinning and you have one of these i would just run away it'll be much easier because it looks like you've had to put a pcb and the new brush roll motor slash head on the thing and that's without even having a look at the switch pack which i think is okay so crikey there is a lesson to be learned here so thank you very much for watching sorry didn't actually go to plan and i will see you soon bye bye